In today's show, Mark Schindler joins the program. We talk about the growth of Trent and Watford, which players on the Blazers are destined to be part of the future, and the Anthony Simons and Damian Lillard pairing. Welcome to Locked On Blazers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Trailblazers, your daily Portland Trailblazers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What up, world? It's your past first point guard and trailblazers reporter, Mike Richmond. You're listening to another episode of Locked on Blazers, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, available wherever you get podcasts. And today's episode is a very special one. We are joined by contributor for basketballnews.com and a fan of, I believe, cranberry juice is what he was drinking on the video right as we started this Cranberry cranberry grape juice. It's very good. uh, Got a good eye. Cranberry grape juice. That is Mark Schindler. How are you doing, Mark? Uh, I'm doing pretty well, man. Uh, better than the Blazers, so I can't complain. Um, I'm sure you're doing well, too. We didn't get a chance to talk about UNC, but Caleb Love, man, like what is happening? Uh, but yeah, I, I'm doing well, man. I can't complain. I have been uh, soft pitching Caleb Love to Joe Cronin every time I see him on the, on the <laughs> pregame. I'm like, hey, hey, Joe, Caleb Love might be a first rounder. And he literally told me the first time he's like, yeah, um, he's like, he might be. I haven't scouted him at all. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, OK, <laughs> OK. And then they were struggling a little bit and they'd lost the Duke. And I was like, hey, Joe, I take it back. I don't think he's a first rounder, but I haven't seen him since they've you know made this tournament run. And he had you know 27 in the second half of a of an elite eight game. So now I'm going to be like ne- next time I see Joe, I'm going to be like, I told you, I told you. Yeah. Turn you bump. It's time. <laughs> yeah. What the Blazers need is like another combo guard. Give exactly. more. Com- Let's add more combo guards to this roster. So other than watching Carolina of basketball uh you wrote a story last week about trend and watford blazers undrafted rookie was on a two-way deal converted to a full-time deal and i i sent you a message and i said hey you want to get on the show and you said hey let's do it next week i'll be free i said no problem i said by that point trend and watford will still be a good player on a bad team <laughs> and then yeah. over the weekend trend and watford got hurt so i feel bad i did that i feel i legitimately jinxed trend and watford but you wrote a story, and it's available on basketballnews.com. If you search Trenton Watford and Mark Schindler, you will find it. Schindler liked the list. Uh, what have you made of Trenton Watford's play this year? What do you, what do you think about him? It's, uh, it's kind of been wild for me because, well, taking into account that Portland is obviously a very difficult context and environment to gauge, um, Trenton has just blown me out of the water from where I thought it was going to be. Uh, like, L- he was – he was very intriguing at LSU. Like he was a super high RSCI guy. Um, clearly had a lot of intricate offensive tools, but I just, he was not a very good prospect at LSU. If we're being completely honest, like defensively he was a mess. LSU's off uh, LSU's defense was terrible. Um, having him and Cam Thomas play high minutes together was uh, an adventure. Um, and there was just a lot going on. So to me, it was a, uh, I could have seen taking Trenton in, in the in the draft, like in the second round, but I thought on draft it made sense. Um, I did not expect him to have an immediate impact like this. Like, even noting that the Blazers are in a funky fit, like I still think he's done a lot. Like, I don't do I think he's a, a fourteen and and an eight guy on on good efficiency moving forward? Probably not. At least not right now. But um, I wanted to write about him because to me, like a lot of what I wanted to see from the Blazers as they transition into shameless tank was what do you what what do you get out of your front court because that's right the question that's always been there like the last four or five years especially after they let mo and uh and alpha Ruc go like okay what is what is going on for us at the four um and i think trendon presents a lot of really interesting stuff there that they just haven't had at that position ever um and more importantly to me like the defense has been like pretty much pretty pretty eye-opening for me compared to where I thought he was going to be not again like it hasn't been amazing the Blazers are, ve- are very bad but the flashes and consistency that he's he's bringing them along with have been pretty impressive to me the wait, the, the Blazers are bad the, very bad yeah <laughs> oh, oh no <laughs> why am I still doing this podcast yeah um I I feel like and you mentioned this in the story you wrote it's like it's such a weird way to judge a team it's like mm-hmm. okay this team's they're getting rocked it's like they're they're down 30 to the Spurs or whatever it is and you're like hey Trenton Watford's got a little stuff um and so it's like it's hard to it's just a weird environment to judge guys I I immediately I think he got a chance to play because he could um, he had really good feel on defense. Like he just has a sense of how to be on defense. I don't think he's a, ever a lockdown defender, but I think he has the smarts to be 
at least a part of a competent defensive team. Uh, are you more intrigued by that or are you more intrigued by sort of the playmaking in between stuff on offense? I think I'm most, well, it's, it's a little bit of both. I think I'm higher on him now because of the stuff that he has shown defensively. Like I thought he had some tools defensively last year, but now to see him put it together a little bit more consistently, um, like you can picture him playing like, like obviously he's not really a shot blocker. He's not no. like, um, uh, like going to be a massive deterrent at the rim, but you can see him like, okay, are we going, we, he's played a little bit in hedge and recover and been okay. Like there have been moments where it looks good. A lot of we, what happens on the back line that's between God and whoever the defender is. But uh, you know, he's, he's got really active hands. I, I like some of the stuff he can do. And especially his coverage versatility has been more in vogue this year. Like you can see the idea of him playing in the Blazers scheme, especially the way the Chauncey's wanted to run this year. Um, and that just gives the opportunity for him to do what he does offensively. Like I think a lot's going to depend on the shot because there have been moments where it's looked better. Like I think uh, in, in March, he's only shooting like 30%, but there was a, a stretch before he got injured where he was shooting a lot better, it, uh, albeit not on high volume, like his shots a little bit wonky. Um, yeah, I don't it takes a while to get off. I don't think he's a good shooter. And I think yeah. that's the, that's the swing skill for him is whether yes. he's going to be, be, be a shooter for sure. Definitely. And but because like, I mean, what's so interesting about him to me, because like right now I can look at him and be like, if he irons out a couple things, I could see him being like the first big off off the bench on a good Blazers team. And for it's again, what makes it hard? Like, I have no idea what the Blazers direction is like. Maybe they do keep building around Dame. Like, I don't I don't know. You know, I think it's pretty clear that they're going to give Dame. I don't know, give them an extension. Dame's going to be part of the plan, at least for all of next season. And if mm. I had to guess, I think he's going to sign the full max two for a $100 million extension this summer and be around for five more years. And this is going to be the plan moving forward. So Dame's going to be here. Uh, what the rest of it looks like will TBA, TBD, but uh, Dame's yeah. going to be part of it. Yes. Yeah, no, exactly. And like, so th that's, that's good to hear. Cause I mean, for me, I've looked at it like, I don't, I don't know, man, but um, I mean, you can, I, I can view him as somebody who can come in and just what he can bring offensively is um, somebody who really doesn't need to soak up usage, like, especially too, for like, when you have a lot of combo guards who are good shooters, like I, we haven't really got, even gotten to see him play with Ant that much. Right. Um, and I want to see more of that because uh trend is he's not like a, a great contact screener or anything but he's pretty good at opening himself up for for shots and opportunities um and and making himself available inside the paint around the dunker spot like just good at getting to getting to cracks in the defense and what's been special is that he's been good enough to capitalize on it like he's got really good touch um because right now like he's a very below the rim athlete so he is. um he can get especially like if he's playing at the five and his shot isn't going and guys can just load up on him then he's gonna have problems but like he's getting to the line a bunch because he's able to take bigs off the bounce and um like again a lot's gonna depend on the shot but i just think there's a really interesting framework there for a player yeah, I think it, he'll be able to run dribble handoffs with their good players. Like a dribble mm -hmm. handoff with Damian Lillard makes you a better player because Damian Lillard's so scary. Like he might get two on the ball immediately when you hand the ball off and then you've got space to make decisions. And Trenton has showed that he's pretty good making decisions in space. But he's going to be a lower usage guy. And if you're a lower usage guy on this team, you need to be able to be a spot up shooter. Like it's yeah. just, it's, it's ha that will be, that will determine all of his other stuff. He's not going to be a leaper. He's not going to be an elite defender, but he's got good feel and good sense. Like you said, for those kind of uh, where to be and how to exploit space. But if he can't exploit the, the sort of like I'm on the weak side and the defense is worried about a Damon Nurk pick and roll, then he's just, uh, he's a bit player. I, I think though he has a path to being a, top eight, top nine contributor on, on this Blazers team that will be competitive next year. Uh, they don't have a starting power forward on the roster currently. So some of it is like, what, who are the gentlemen in front of them? Uh, I think that'll be determined a lot. Who is their backup center and who's their, who's their starting power forward. And if those boxes get checked, where does Trendon fit in there? But I, I I'm with you. I think he's shown enough as a sort of decision maker and with a guy with good feel that you, you feel, you feel okay about what he'll be. But again, we don't, the context will matter a lot for what Trenton does. Yeah. The context will absolutely matter a lot. Uh, I want to ask you just thoughts on the Blazers sort of 
direction in general in the second segment. Before we do that, I want to tell my listeners about prize picks. It's the daily fantasy option for the NBA that you need to try. You can download their award-winning app or visit prizepicks.com. It's daily fantasy made easy. I really like prize picks. I think you will too. What you do is you pick between two and five players and you just pick an over under on their projections. So you can win up to 10 times on any of your entries. You can make these entries in 60 seconds. It's super easy. And once you win, the Prize Picks offers safe and fast withdrawals. Here's how it works. Uh, you're picking points scored, rebounds, assists, and you're just picking the over-under on the projections. You're not playing against the field. You're not playing against experts. You're just saying, I think every time this is going to score more than 18 and a half points, you pick the over, and if you win, Prize Picks gives you the money. Plus, you can do other sports, combination sports. So if you want to bet on college basketball or the NFL or Major League Baseball or soccer or whatever it might be, you can combine those with NBA entries. But right now, Prize Picks has an exclusive offer for all my listeners. You get $50 for free if your first prize picks entry scores a single point, but you must use the code NBA. That's right, an exclusive offer for locked on listeners. Sign up today. Use the promo code NBA for $50 free dollars of player on your first prize picks entry scores a single point. That's prize picks daily fantasy made easy. All right, still chatting here with Mark Schindler, contributor to basketball news. And quite frankly, just a sharp basketball mind who sees these sees these youngsters develop. Uh, few appreciate the youngsters like Trendon Watford, undrafted second rounder like Mark. So I'm, I'm glad you're joining us today, Mark. I, I just want to ask sort of big picture. What have you made of the Blazers' remodel, for lack of a better? I don't want to say uh, tear yeah. down because like they still have guys in the roster, but what have you made of the remodel in general? Yeah, um, it's it's. <laughs> I don't want to just throw my hands and be like, eh, like I, I, That's there's, a- there's interesting stuff, but also like, I just really need to see what the hell happens in free agency. Right. Like it adding Jeremy Grant. Interesting. Sure. Like I know there was the cryptic picture um, and there's been a lot hinted to that. They've been mentioned by Jake Fisher, Woj, everyone, you know, Um but I'm also just like, okay, like that's, I do think that makes them interesting better than they were with CJ. I don't know, but um, I will say, I hope they keep Josh Hart. Um, I think they I was, will. I think it's pretty was, clear that they will too. So I think you, you, your wish, your wish will be granted. <laughs> good. Cause I was very in on the Josh Hart train uh, in, in New Orleans. Like CJ has been a boon for them, but like Josh is like the kind of guy who, that I think really fits in Portland. Like he, he brings athleticism, which they always need. Um, he's a, he's pretty solid defensively. He's not like amazing, but he's decent. Um, the shot is again, like kind of a swing thing for him, but uh this year he like even in, in in new orleans i think it's been more showcased and highlighted since he's been in portland but even in new orleans like he i think he had run more ball screens in the first 30 games than he had the last two years like he really has developed as a, as a as a ball handler um it's still like kind of mechanical it's based a lot on power drives but like he's always had really good feel and ability to just make plays but now that he can make more co- coordinated drives to the rim like it opens up some stuff with him getting to the free throw line. It makes him a lot more viable as like a secondary playing off of somebody. Um, like he went from a guy who was a borderline starter last year to now like being pretty much a bona fide starter. Like I don't, I don't really think there's a lot of debate up for it. So um, he's been interesting. Um, I've really liked his addition and I think he makes a lot of sense next to Dame. Um, the Josh Hart thing, uh, he, this he's true. He's a straight line driver. Like he doesn't have a lot of wiggle, but he will get downhill and decide he's going downhill. And I think that's as a primary, which he's been for, he was for a month. He was a Blazers like engine on offense, which is totally unfair, but he did score 44 points in a game and then had a couple 30 point games. He gets some monster nights as their primary guy, but he'll be, he's not going to be that on a good team. He's not even going to be that on next year's team, whether they're good or not, they're going to have Damon Ants and back and blah, blah, blah. But I think like the straight line stuff, if you're the second side creator, the ball swings to you when you're running a quick action, like being a, being a guy who just goes one way is a little more tenable than if you are the primary guy with nine, you know, 10 eyeballs on you having to come down, come down the court. So I, I think his, it's hard to know what his role exactly will be. Like, I think he's not going to be the engine in the second unit either, but I, I, I think there's, I think his his growth as a passer average a career high in assists before he came uh, in in New Orleans before he came here and then took on even more responsibility with the Blazers. I think that works. Like I think that is a skill set that'll help. Um, the question is, does he play two or three for me? Because if he plays three, you're not getting the most out of Josh Hart. Yeah, no, I agree entirely, and I think that's what makes the rest of this uh, interesting. Like Greg Brown 
I am routinely interested by. Um, like just one of the most, uh, like one of the weirdest athletic profiles I've ever seen. Like he had a, he had a dunk in, uh, I can't remember what game it was. Like he came out of the slot and he took one step and got to the rim, but also like watching him run. Like he's a very awkward runner. Like, it's just <laughs> like, he's like all limbs. And I, I don't mean it to sound like rude or crass or anything. It's just like it, when I, I mean, I watch like young dudes all the time and like just watching him. I'm like, I have no idea how his body works to be completely honest. Like physically, it just doesn't make sense to me sometimes. Uh, X uh, circle and square all jump for him uh, at the moment. <laughs> but like, I do think there have been like really interesting moments of weak side rim protection. And um, obviously as a lob target, which again, not really something that's always been in Portland, um, but he's still kind of a ways away from me. Like yeah, I don't the feel think he... is just not there. Um and he's again somebody who would really benefit from having a G League team, but you know, yeah, they're they're not going to do that. I, they, maybe they'll send guys to the G League in the next iteration. Like maybe if they had been healthier in another situation, they could have said. Hey, in the past, they've sent guys to like Dallas or whatever and said, yeah. "Hey, go go play some G League games." Um, they're not going to get their own G League team with this ownership group. It's just not going to happen. But if should there be another ownership group here in the near future, I think. Um, indeed, they will be the last NBA team to get on board with believing in developments. Um, in the, I, I think what happened with the G League stuff is that Paul Allen was an early investor in the Idaho Stampede, uh, and I think they lost a whole bunch of money. And he said, yeah. I don't want to do that again. Like, uh, billionaires hate losing money. So it was like, we'll do it. And they started to develop guys in house really well. We'll blame Will Barton. Will Barton's, Will Barton improved too much in house, and the Blazers decided they didn't want a G League team. Real quick, I want to tell you all about Built Bar. It's the best tasting protein bar that there is. This is a morning record with Mark. So to get my day started, I, gr I literally grabbed a Built Bar, a cookies and cream Built Bar from, the, from my cabinet. Listen. 18 grams of protein, 140 calories, just five grams of sugar, four net carbs. That's what the average, basically what the average Bill Bar has. That's just my personal favorite. You're going to find a flavor that you might like, like raspberry or coconut almond or double chocolate or salted caramel. Whatever you're looking for, you're going to find something. Like I said, they all pack a punch. They're all tasty, all healthy. Go get yourself some. Go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15. You got 15% off your next order. That's promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. Still a pass first point guard, still Mike Richmond. You are still listening to Locked on Blazers. I'm going to drop you back into the rest of my conversation with basketball news' Mark Schindler as we talk about Anthony Simons, Damian Lillard, and what's next for the Blazers' new look backcourt. What do you make of the Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons pairing? Like, is this Damian CJ 2.0 or is this something else? Um, yeah, I've thought about that a lot because they're – I know a lot gets brought up in similarities to Ant and CJ. Like, CJ's still a better player, like, by far right now. I think anybody who makes the comparison and says that Ant's better already is a little bit being unfair. Um, but what makes him different is Ant's just a, an even better shooter, like, by a mile, which is saying a lot. Yeah. I mean, CJ's a better shooter than I think he's ever gotten credit for. But, like, Ant will take more from three. He has more variety in his shot because he's a little bit taller. He's got a higher release. Um, so that – is awesome. Like, I do think that there's some viability in, in them playing together, but on the other hand, Ant's an even worse defender than CJ. Um, right. He's a worse defender than Dame. Like I do have questions about that tenability. Um, but I do think like, given what his growth trajectory has already been like, um, I mean, he's 22 right now. You never know exactly how growth tracks are going to go, but I do think there's, there's, there's some, I wouldn't just say low hanging fruit. That would be the unfair way to put it. But like, can he make some more growth as a playmaker and passer? Does his ball handling kick up another notch? Because I didn't expect it to get to where it was this year. Like, yeah, the, I mean, this guy literally like could not attack closeouts without getting picked apart at the nail last year. And now he's like, oh, wow, I can really dribble. Like, yeah, like a lead, <laughs> a lead, like basically he was like struggling at in at christmas and then by yeah. january 15th he's like leading the offense and averaging you know whatever 25 and 9 or 25 yeah, and 7 it was or whatever it was. like and he took a massive jump so i'm with yeah. you like that was sort of wild and i don't think we can project another jump of that proportion but if he can continue to hone those things and i think the ball handling is is really a big one for him even a tighter handle he can take a next step you mentioned that he's not better than cj right now i agree and one time i said that on here and people came for me so be careful um well i will live by it cj's been awesome man like he's been so good in, he's been so good um 
I, I, it's okay. It's like, it's funny. It's like when players are good, when you say like, oh, he's not as good as this other good player, it's like an insult. It's like, CJ's really good. He averaged 20 points for a decade. Um, that would be a great place to get to. Do you, do you think that Ant's ceiling is higher than what CJ is right now? Like, do you, could you see a situation where he's, you know, I think obviously team context matters, but CJ's averaging like 27 and six for New Orleans. Is, is, does Ant have something, a ceiling that approaches that in your eyes? Uh, Man, it's tough. Uh, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. It's a big number. Yeah. I mean, it, if he can get better defensively and physically, like I think there's uh, if he's able to fill out a little bit more functionally, I should say, um, he could get better around the rim. I think a lot's going to come from what happens with him in the in-between game um, and developing more of a floater. Um, and what can he get to defensively? Because I yeah. think that's I mean, that's the crux of it for me. Like if he's going to just be somebody who gets picked on all the time defensively, like I'm not that I'm not going to be interested in him as a player, but that definitely lowers his cap for me. Um, but I mean, where does, where does he need to improve defensively for you? What are his biggest weaknesses? Everywhere, right? literally everywhere. Like, and the, the hard part too, is like, uh, he's the kind of guy, I don't know where the, I think he can make improvements at the point of attack and maybe as a screen navigator, but, um, or I mean, like he, he definitely can, like, it's very clear on tape that he needs to, but it's also the kind of thing too, where there are just guys who have problems with that. Like, I, I think there are, there's always going to be guys who are like pointed out and like, oh, well, he's just not trying. Like, I don't think it's that. It's just that some guys don't see screens coming. Um, yep. It's a skill. And, yeah, exactly. Like, I, I appreciate how you mentioned defensive feel for Trendon because, I mean, feel is a thing on both sides. Like, there are guys defensively who just don't ever really fully grasp it, even if they are super athletic and seem like they should be better defenders. Um, it just happens. And I – I don't want to say I'm worried, but I, I do think that could be something for Ant just because we haven't really seen a lot of defensive improvement from, from him throughout his career. Um, so it's definitely interesting to monitor. But what I'm so encouraged about with him uh, in growing as a playmaker is everything he's doing mostly is coming out of pick and roll. So like yep. that's the kind of stuff that he's going to be able to iron out. And even if, even if it's mechanical, like he's got already just – insane gravity as a pull-up shooter like he's scary yep i mean he's the kind of like that's what makes him so interesting because he's a guy who like he doesn't need crazy downhill scoring gravity which he has to a degree with with you know his vertical and, and his handle to get downhill now but um everything unlocks for him because of what he does from behind the arc and how he can command a defense and that opens up like pretty simple reads for somebody that is trying to develop as, as a playmaker so i think i look at him and i'm like do I ever think he's going to be like, I, I don't want to call him Dame, but like Dame is not like a preternatural playmaker or anything, but it's because no, he, he has developed a lot as a playmaker yeah. over the years. Yeah, exactly. Like he, they're similar mold because insane pull of gravity um, that's going to bend a defense and Dame's gotten really good at those reads. And I think not, you know, to, to compare Ant to a future hall of famer, I'm not there, but like yeah. in terms of somebody who can become like, you know, capably leading an offense, I think that's possible for sure. So um maybe a higher ceiling than CJ. I think that's, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call it out of the realm of possibility, but um, it's just going to depend on a lot of things happening. Yeah. I, I thought the, the reps he got on the ball in uh, January and February where they were, where he was clearly their best player, you know, once CJ was gone and Dame was still out when he was, when he was getting accepting two on the ball and making those reads. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a little weird because he's passing to like Drew Eubanks and Trenton Watford. Um, so it's not the same. But when he was running it with Nurk for that stretch, like he looked, him and Nurk had good chemistry. He looked yeah. like someone who understood how to manipulate uh, defensive attention. Then there was one night he played the Phoenix Suns and they just put the clamps on him. Yeah. And it was like, yes, that is the next level for you. Obviously the Suns, like they might roll to an NBA title this year. So I don't want to say like, you've got to be able to crack the Suns code. Um, that's not fair. But like, I think there are levels. We saw, we've seen him take a really big jump this year and it's just, what is the next level look like for him? And I think, um, I think the continued improvement as a playmaker unlocks so much of how scary he is because he's one of the great shooters in the league right now. Like, I think he's one of the top 15 shooters in the NBA. Oh, easily. Um, yeah. He's, he's fantastic. Like he's, he can, his ability to shoot off the bounce, shoot off the catch, shoot off, you know, quick, quick snatch dribbles or just, or stretch you out and get and get going to his right. Like he's, he's got a lot of, he can really shoot it. And some of those shooting impact metrics consider him one of the top five shooters in the league. Like he's, he could play. Yeah. No, 100%. Um, the other, like just to run through a couple of other things too. Um, yeah. What's so difficult is like, I feel like there are a lot of guys who are maybe interesting as like a ninth or 10th guy eventually, but I just don't know who the fifth starter is, is kind of right. where I'm at right now. Um, like, cause obviously you have Ant, you have Dame, you have, you have Josh, 
you have Nurk, and I'm just kind of like, who is at the four? Because it's not Justice Winslow. Like, I'm sorry. No, like, and it's and it's not Nasir Little. Yeah. Um. I I wish it was, but like Nasir is not quite there. Unless some other crazy stuff happens. Like if he'd been able to finish out the season, right. who knows? Um. He was showing some signs, but and well, I still good. believe in him he's, a lot. But yeah. yeah, he's good. But he's yeah, probably not good. a starting power forward in the NBA. That's exactly. Different, those are different lines. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. And uh, like Brandon Williams has been interesting as like a future third guard. Um. But again that's like okay his defense is like bleh. um and but he he does have some real interesting pick and roll craft like i know oh, the, the percentages have kind of sucked recently but um his space creation the stuff that he's been doing like i've had so many scouts hit me up and be like is is what's happening with Brand, brandon williams like that that's arizona brandon williams i'm like yeah man like that's, that's yeah. arizona brandon williams but like um i just who is the four next year and i, I there's not an answer right now so. I mean, it, it seems like the worst kept secret in the league that it's Jeremy Grant. Yeah. Um, we will, but they have to get, so many stuff has to happen for them to get there. That's like, it's like this sort of foregone conclusion. Like literally the reporting yeah. from Shams Trania was like, it when the Blazers get the pick from New Orleans, they will trade it for Jeremy Grant. And it was like, wow, <laughs> we've already agreed to that on March 10th or whatever. <laughs> exactly. But, but yeah. the Pelicans might make the playoffs. Like, so then they won't have that pick. And if they don't have that pick, then it just changes Um you know, there's a lot of dominoes to fall. I'm with you. I think the Blazers have some intriguing parts. Like I, I like, um, I, I like, obviously I like Damon Ant. Those are really good basketball players. I like Josh Hart. I like Nas. I like Nurk. I like Justice Winslow as a, as a big off the bench. I like Trina Watford as a big off the bench, but that's not a, that's probably not a playoff team. That's a core of yeah. a solid team, uh, but they need to, they need to check some boxes. Mark, thanks so much for joining the program. Really appreciate you. Uh, where can people get more of your stuff if they're looking for it? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at M Schindler MBA. Um, I have my Patreon link in there as well. I'm not always super active on Patreon, but you know your support there is what helps me be extremely active everywhere else. Um, so yeah, if you guys appreciate my work and enjoy what I do, uh, I, you know any support in in any way, shape, or form is always appreciated. I appreciate you having me on, Mike. Hey, thanks for joining us. Listeners, come back for shows this week. CJ McCollum makes his return this evening to the Moda Center. Uh, he's not going to be playing many of his former friends, but he's certainly going to be playing against a bunch of guys wearing his old jersey. So uh, we will talk about that game on Thursday show. Friday show is going to be a mailbag. We're going to have a whole bunch of fun. So come back and join us five days a week, available wherever you get podcasts. And on YouTube, just search Lockdown Blazers. You'll find us right there waiting for you. Appreciate you listening. Talk to you soon.